Have you ever met a celebrity who was a complete dick? My ex-boyfriend was a server at the hotel in Ocean City where Chris Brown and Rihanna came to visit back in 08. He had to wait on them privately while they hung out in the hot tub. When he tried to take their order, they both looked at him like he was stupid and the bodyguard had to clarify that they would be communicating through him. So he asked the bodyguard what they wanted to eat, and both Rihanna and Chris ordered PB&J off the fucking kids menu and nothing else. Of course they didn't tip. Later that night there was a room service call from Chris Brown and my ex had to bring up more food. That time, Rahana wasn't around, but Chris Brown was polite and said thank you. Still didn't tip though. It just baffles me why people act that way. Over a decade ago, around 2002, I worked at the movie theater at Universal City Walk. So it was a morning shift, very slow, and I was at the ticket window. A short and stocky guy comes up with a skinny blonde that is at least a half foot taller than him, and as he nears my window, I see that it is William Shatner. I wasn't a big fan, but he was the first celebrity I'd seen, so I was pretty starstruck. I didn't say anything, because I figured he just wanted to see a flick, and didn't need some kid bugging him. In my excitement I forgot to give him his $2 parking rebate, but immediately apologized and handed over the 2 bucks. About 5 minutes later, a manager comes in and asks if I sold tickets to William Shatner. Yeah. I hadn't seen a celebrity yet, and I just got Captain fucking Kirk at my window. So my manager tells me he walked to the ticket taker at the entrance and demanded to speak to a manager. He then tells this manager that the guy that sold him tickets, me, tried to scam him out of his parking rebate. He wanted my ass fired for trying to steal from him and didn't even them I apologized and gave him the rebate. Thankfully my manager believed me, otherwise security would have had to go over the security footage to see if I pocketed $2. My manager summed it up nicely, okay, I didn't think you tried to steal it, that doesn't seem like you. He just seems like a dick, like he wants you fired. I mean, what does $2 mean to Captain Kirk? Michael Serra. My family has a permanent camper at a campground in northern Michigan, and one summer they were filming parts of Youth in a Revolt there. Being huge Arrested Development fans, my friend and I decided we'd wait around all day until we finally got a chance to meet Michael Serra. We watched a lot of the filming from underneath the shade of a tree when a big bearded guy in a wolf shirt walked by and casually said hello ladies and kept walking. After a minute I realized it was the guy from Out Cold, this was pre The Hangover, and Out Cold was his only movie I'd seen, so we ran after him, and asked for a photo. He was really nice and said of course, and as we were taking a photo, selfie style, Michael Serra strolled up, and offered to take the photo for us. We were ecstatic, obviously, and handed him the camera. He snapped the pic, looked at it, and said beautiful, and gave it back, then Zatch took a photo of us with Michael Serra. We were giddily running back to the trailer, to show my mom by the time we looked at the pictures. It was then, that we realized in the photo of us with Zatch, our heads were all cut off, and you could only see from the neck down. So, we learned that Michael Serra is kind of a hilarious douche. No regrets. Local celebrity, I worked at a bar in Ohio. A fairly well known former Ohio State quarterback and his drunk buddies tried to get free drinks from me by using the do you know who I am line. When that didn't work, they distracted the other bartender and stole two bottles of scotch. He was completely unapologetic when confronted. Even after I told him that someone could have been fired for the missing booze. Somewhat well known celebrity met Mike Smith, Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys, at one of the road shows they did. Asked him for a picture, and he smacked the phone out of my hand, and told me to fuck off. Just kidding. Mike posed for many pictures, and was really nice about it. His normal voice is absolutely nothing like his Bubbles voice. Joaquin Phoenix very aggressively got up in my face, because he thought I took a picture of his family. He was hosting an anti-violence event at the restaurant I worked at. In reality I took a snapshot of a projector playing Sunday football, while ABC by Jackson 5 was blasting loud as fuck with nobody in the room. He got in my face, and yelled for like 5 minutes about how I was better than, that when I couldn't show him the video, or give a better explanation of why I had violated his family's privacy, 
He then found the owner and tried to get me in trouble, but the owner had my back 100%. Later that night I returned to eat dinner at the restaurant and the bartender told me Joaquin was looking for me. I found him drunk as fuck ready to apologize, and he bought me a shot of whiskey. So all in all a pretty interesting turn of events for me that day. TL, doctor, took a snapchat of nothing, got yelled at by Joaquin Phoenix, later he apologized, and bought me a shot. <laughs> Phil Collins. I was 16 or 17 traveling with my family in Switzerland, and saw him standing at a hotel counter in Zurich. I asked my mom if it would be okay to introduce myself to him and tell him how much I liked his music. My mom said yes, just be polite and keep it short, since he might be busy. I walked to the counter and said excuse me, are you Phil Collins? He said yes and looked exasperated. I meekly said I just wanted to meet you, I'm a big fan of your music, and have been listening to Genesis with my mom, since I was little. He looked me right in the face, and said I don't really care, and I don't have time for this. I walked back to my mom and started crying. I was so embarrassed, and was so upset, that someone could be that rude to someone paying them a compliment. Whatever, Peter Gabriel is better anyways. William Shatner. He owns and shows American Saddlebirds, breed of horse. He and I showed against each other in a class. He looked like the biggest doucher bag ever, and luckily I beat him fair and square. But that isn't the story. He is notorious in the Saddlebird niche of the horse riding world for being a huge asshole and overall mean person. When he was walking around at a horse show, he was approached by a young Star Trek fan, who had to be younger than 8 years old. The fan asked for an autograph, because who gets to see the original Captain Kirk walking around without being surrounded by crowds of fans? Anyways, the child politely asked, and Mr. Shatner rudely yelled at the child that he wouldn't sign an autograph, and that the kid should get out of his way. I would understand that if he were showing that night and or needed to be somewhere with his horse, but he didn't. He was just plain rude to a child. Plenty of people saw, and so now he is regarded as being an ass. If he didn't want to autograph something, fine, but don't be mean about it, and don't yell at a child who looks up to you. There are other celebs in the saddle but show circuit who are a lot nicer and overall a lot more enjoyable to be around and show against. Carson Kressley is one, along with the heiress to the Wrigley Fortune. They are pleasant when you approach them or they both do their part to advocate for the breed and showing. Worked as a techie for a Ryan Gosling movie. He was great on set, and he really hit it off with the crew. Never would have imagined that a big movie star like him would be that friendly. He was always bringing a smile to everyone's faces, shooting the shit, and was just an all-around fun person. Over the course of the shooting, we hung out on occasion, usually as a group with some of the other crewmates. We went to one of the local clubs one night. The place was packed with beautiful women. I thought I would definitely get laid that night, especially with Ryan by my side. Well, let's just say I left with a pretty dry dick. Do you know how hard it is to get it in when he tries to be your wingman? TL, Doctor, Ryan Gosling is a bro, but all the ladies only want his D. I was pretty young at the time. Between 10 to 13. It was my birthday and my brother was working at this restaurant called TGI Fridays. I was eating Sunday after Sunday, enjoying all the free grub from everyone at the restaurant, when I see two WWF wrestlers, at the time going under the moniker, the Acolytes. I was sure it was them, but way too nervous to say anything. At one point my brother comes to my table and points them out. I cut him off, before he can finish, I know. They're the Acolytes. He laughed and told me if I knew who they were to go over there and ask for an autograph. I shook my head no, but he insisted on taking me over to their table. A few booths away my brother stops. He gives me a not a pudding pen, and a supportive nudge in their direction. So I walk up to their table. I remember there was a ton of empty drinks, and one of them had their backs to the wall and their legs up on the booth relaxing. Hi, my name is Solomon Grungy, and I think you guys are pretty cool. It's my birthday today, and I was wondering if I could get your autographs. They told me to fuck off as they waved their hands at me dismissively. I walked back to my brother who asked what happened. They told me to fuck off. My older brother took me back over to the table and verbally tore them apart. Telling them that I'm just a kid. How could they disrespect their fans? Calling them rude drunks. 
they acted all incensed and disrespected, paying their tab and quickly leaving. Fuck those guys. I'm not sure if I've posted this on reddit before and it's bound to get buried because I'm late to the thread, but here goes. A college near my hometown holds contra dances every Thursday night that my friends and I like to go to because there's not a whole lot else to do as not quite 21 year olds in western North Carolina. So, one random Thursday we decide last minute to go. This guy in a scruffy beard, not uncommon for a rural liberal arts school, and sunglasses, strange for 9 o'clock, indoors, comes up to me, and asks me to dance, I say sure, introduce myself, and wait for scruffy beard to introduce himself. He just kind of stands there, so I eventually ask him his name. He says really? And just stares at me, like I'm obviously supposed to know who he is, rolls his eyes, and says something along the lines of I can't believe you don't know who I am. I'm James Franco, and implies that maybe he should ask someone else to dance, if I didn't appreciate it. I just thought that was unnecessary. You've grown your beard out, and worn sunglasses to an indoor, night event, it looks like you're trying not to be recognized. It seems like you'd just roll with it and enjoy the anonymity if somebody didn't know who you were, rather than acting offended. Pete Tong. Booked him to DJ at our event. Picked him up from the airport. He sat in the back of the car with his headphones on. Fine I thought, probably needs time out. He received a phone call while in the car. Of course I could only hear one side of the conversation. I dunno. Some shitty car in the middle of nowhere we had hired a Merc. I dunno. Can't be asked to be honest etc etc. Very few words to myself in general, as the night got into swing, I had 10 minutes left of my set, before he was due to come on. His agent approached me, he aimed coming on mate. My heart sank. Lots of upset clubbers. He eventually came out 30 minutes late, while I crapped my pants. He played a terrible set, and to cut a long story short, a full glass of red wine was poured over a new pioneer mixer, while they sniggered. 6,000 pound BTW. My wife, L, works at a museum, and a visiting artist had a small stage presentation. She has guest presenters read the biography part, as if they are the artist. For this one, the guest presenter was Frances McDormand. Fran was in town for several days, so they could rehearse, then do the show. L got to help her out, drive her around town, and arrange things for her. The evening of the show, L was helping Fran with final preparations, and asked if she needed anything, food, a drink, etc. Fran said she would like a coke. L went down to the cafeteria, but they only had Pepsi. L brought one to Fran and told her, if she would rather have coke, she would go across the street and get one. Fran thought for a second, and said, yeah. If it isn't too much trouble I think I would rather have a coke. L went and got one. Fran took it, thanked her profusely, gave her the Pepsi, and said, Now, I want you to tell people that I was a total bitch, and when you brought me a Pepsi, I threw it at you, and yelled that I asked for coke, not Pepsi. After the show, they went to dinner, and Fran said she really enjoyed hanging around with L. When she went home, she sent L an art book from a show she thought L would be interested in. Despite her wanting people to think she's horrible, Frances McDormand is really a very nice person. No. I have met Shaquille O'Neal, Lebron James' mother, and various Browns team members at one point or another. I have absolutely nothing remarkable to say about the Browns members. At the time, I worked in a health food store and they were equally as remarkable as any other customer. Some were nice, some were dicks, but nothing notable outside of standard customer attitudes and mannerisms. Shaq came in looking for a few items, and I offered to help him find them. He took me up on the offer and we went around as we talked about the various things he was looking for. He was very knowledgeable and polite, I told him to have a good day and a good game. He said thank you, and went to check out. If everyone had half of the grace of Shaq retail would be a thoroughly enjoyable profession all the time. Lebron's mom came in, when I was working part time nights in a sandwich shop. She demanded her food be free, because she was Lebron's mom and he's done so much for the community. I informed her that first, this was not Akron, and he has done nothing of note for the community we were in and second, if Lebron himself were to come in I would have to charge him the $6 for his sandwich, because I'm not losing my job over anyone getting free food. 
She ranted, raved, and basically lost her damn mind, until I threatened to have her removed from the premises and arrested. She called me a racist as I pulled out my phone to call the police and left. Zero tenths would not deal with her again. Johnny Knoxville's, in fact, a raging jackass. This was a few years ago, when I was selling ice cream in a popular beach town in L. A. He came in with a pretty girl, much, much too young for him, and just kept screaming about everything, and throwing plastic spoons. When I asked him what he wanted he shouted two fucking ice creams damn paraphrasing. It was a while ago, and then had me throw them out, and make him our special which was a plastic children's beach bucket filled with five kinds of ice cream and every topping. He's still yelling and swearing. Normally I'd have told him to stop, because we're a family business, but the girl he was with was laughing so hard I knew it wouldn't matter what I said. They eventually left. No tip, of course. Also, he looked to be in pretty bad shape. Like, really bad. He had booze bloat, and really thick shades. It was kinda sad, actually. A few years ago my mom and I ran into Nick Lachey in a parking garage. My mom has a celebrity picture competition with my aunt, and they trade pictures of celebs they run into. Mind you they are normally local news personalities and college athletes. Well my mom asked Nick to get a picture with her. He said okay. This is where the problem started. My mother is in her 60s, and she had just gotten the new phone. She fumbled around with it for a few moments, maybe 20 seconds, before Nick said he didn't have time for it and walked away. A few weeks later I saw him in the cereal aisle at Crozier. I said what up Nick, and stuck my hand out for a high five. He stuck his fist out for a fist bump. I adjusted, only he did too, so we had one of those awkward high five slash fist bump things. So Nick Lachey can't even high five right. And Edick. He was at a bar that runs after hours and passes off as a party to keep the cops away and kept asking everyone there to buy him drinks. Once he was drunk enough he started telling people he needed coke and told them to buy it for him. If they said no or they didn't have any he would keep bugging them until they left him or just caved in. Before he got too rowdy he kept coming up to my friends and me asking if we would smoke him out to which my friends were a little off put, but said fuck it, because how many times do you get to smoke out a D-list celebrity? Eventually the guy was so fucked up he started coming up to people and pretty much groped them, or got entirely in their personal space. I saw him pretty much nibbling on one girl's ear that he was talking to, and she didn't seem too thrilled with the situation. Anyhow I guess that's what happens when Andy Dick rolls through and none of the bartenders or security seem to be phased by his behavior.